In this video, we're going to be looking at uniform acceleration and we are essentially going to be looking at the equations for motion in a straight line. We need to remind ourselves of some basic stuff from GCSE to understand the physical quantities that are required. First one is distance. Distance is the total path length traveled. Distance is a scalar, so all we're concerned about is the length of the route. 20 kilometers, 15 miles, doesn't really matter. Direction does not play a role as this is an, a scalar. Symbol is D or X or Y, depending on the, the plane that we're working in. The SI units is meters and it is a scalar quantity, so it's always positive, no exceptions to that. Displacement is the difference in position in space. It is the shortest distance between the start and end point of a motion. Direction is very, very important here, so don't forget that. It is always measured from the start to the finish and includes direction. So if we have an object that does this, if we measured that red line as it stands, that would give us the distance traveled but the displacement is the straight line from the start to the finish. It is a straight line, one direction. We would need to give a direction, be it in the cardinal points, left, right, up, down, east, west, etc. It's still SI unit is meters, and it is a vector, so it has a positive or a negative value to it. Those just give me direction. Speed and velocity. Speed is the rate at which an object covers a distance. Rate means divide by time. So anything that is the rate of or rate at which, it has to have a time value attached to it. Velocity is the rate of change of displacement. Distance is a scalar, so speed is a scalar. Displacement is a vector, so velocity is a vector. Velocity and displacement must have the same direction. Okay, then we get acceleration. Acceleration is a vector. Acceleration is rate of change of an object's velocity. Rate of change divided by time. In a specific direction. So it's the rate of change of velocity in a specific direction. Here, unlike with velocity, where velocity is in the same direction as the displacement most of the time, here our velocity, our velocity and acceleration do not need to be in the same direction. Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. So, that leads us to the equations of motion. You are also going to see these given to you as they are sometimes referred to as Suvat equations. Okay, Suvat being S U V A T. That really just comes from the symbols. Those are the four equations V equals U plus A T, S equals U plus V over T times T. So sometimes we draw those in brackets. All right. S equals UT plus a half AT squared, and V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. V is your final velocity, final, measured in meters per second. U is initial velocity, measured in meters per second. A is acceleration, meters per second squared. T is time, and S is displacement. These equations will be given to you on your equation sheet in your exams. It's always a good idea to know them though because it will make your life easier and you're actually going to use them a lot. So we're going to look at how we derive these equations because that helps you understand them and the more you understand them the better you will be at using them. The first equation comes from the fact that we know that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, rate of change of velocity means change in velocity over time. Change in velocity is always V minus U over T. So if I have an equation that says V minus U over T, I times both time spaces by 
t. That means I've got a times t equals v minus u. I take the u over to the right hand side and I've got u plus a t equals v and all we do is make v the subject of the formula. So v equals u plus a t. That's our first equation. Our second equation comes from the fact that we know that displacement is actually average velocity over time. So if we wanted to know the displacement, when we look at average velocity, all right, so if we look in the, at the average velocity of an object, we will say that it is displacement over time. Now, average velocity would be V final plus initial, initial plus final, doesn't matter, divided by 2. Our first velocity plus our last velocity divided by 2. This is plus, it doesn't matter which way around we write it. So if I went U plus V over 2 equals displacement over time, times by time on both sides, those cancel out. So U plus V over 2 times t equals s. That's our second equation derived. The next two are a little more complicated. Okay, so what we're going to do for the next equations is we are going to take the fact that we know that v equals u plus a t and we know that s equals u plus v over 2 times t. Okay, and we are actually going to substitute this equation for V into there. Okay? So that's what we're doing at this point. We know that V equals U plus AT. Alright? So watch. S will then be equal to U, and I'm going to put that in place, plus u plus a t over 2 times by t and that would be t over 1. I'm going to take that 2 over so I'm going to times by 2 on both sides okay this gives me 2s for now just go with what I'm doing I'm going to add those two together so that's 2u plus a t times by t Okay, using what I know from maths, I'm going to multiply that in. 2s is 2ut plus at squared. I want s on its own, so I'm going to divide by the 2 again. So s equals u times t plus a half at squared. That gives me my third equation. The fourth equation gets a little more complicated for us. Okay, so the fourth equation, I'm going to start with V, I'm going to start with this equation again for the fourth equation, but this time I'm going to make A, so I'm making this a subject, V minus U over T. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by S. This has got an S in it. No T, so I've got to get rid of that along the way. Okay? So if I multiply both sides by S, I'm going to get AS equals V minus U over T times S. But I know that S is actually V plus U over 2 times T. Okay? Because of that, I'm going to leave A and S there, okay? I'm going to replace S over there with my equation for S. So, I've got V minus U over T times by U plus V over 2 times by T. What that does for me is the t's disappear, all right, and I'm going to get as equal to v minus u times 
u plus v over 2. Let's get the 2 on the other side. 2as. v minus u. I'm going to make this v plus u just because it makes it easier. We multiply this the second side of the bracket out like we would in maths. And it's a perfect square, which is nice, because we're going to have v squared. Then you're going to have plus uv, minus uv, so they're going to disappear, minus u squared. We don't particularly like the minus, so I'm going to make go the minus on the other side, and I get u squared plus 2as equals v squared. Now, you may need to rewind the video and look at that again, but it's okay. There's a, there's a whole bunch of maths in there. That's important for you to know. You may need to relook at that again. The important thing, though, is for you to be able to work with them. So, when we solve these problems, good practice, write down what you're given. Helps you understand the question. Write down what you have to calculate. Helps you remember what the command is. Choose a direction as positive. This may or may not be given to you. Usually, if it's not given, I will always choose the original direction as positive. Choose the most suitable equation of motion or SUBAT equation. Substitute in what you know. Do the calculation. And then add direction if necessary, especially if you're, getting your, if you're doing a, a, a vector. So, if you're only asked for magnitude, you don't need a, pos a, a direction at the end, and you really should give your final answer as a positive, because then it's a magnitude. Right. Remember a couple of things. Number one, if an object starts from rest, an implied piece of information, your initial velocity is zero. If it comes to a stop, your final velocity is zero. If acceleration is positive, generally speaking, your, your object is moving faster, so your final's bigger than your initial. If your object is, if the acceleration is negative, then your object is slowing down, all right, and V is smaller than your initial. If it is a constant velocity, then acceleration is zero. So there's certain words you need to be looking for. Let's look at an example. A car starts from rest, U equals zero. It accelerates in a southerly direction at 3 meters per second squared. So A is 3 meters per second squared. Calculate the velocity V after 10 seconds. Well, I'm making south positive. I don't know my final velocity. I know my initial. I know my acceleration. I know my time. I know S. I, want, I don't know S. doesn't matter that I don't know S because I want V. I always write this, this is just something I do in my list of things that I have. I always try to make a list in this equation. So actually, that's the first equation I was given. V, v equals U plus AT. It's just habit. So, V equals U plus AT. U is 0, started from rest. A is 3. T is 10. Gives me 13 meters per second south. Nice and straightforward. This is now a given piece of information. Now they want the distance covered in that time. You have worked out final velocity. You're welcome to use it. So, of course, we could have chosen to use v squared equals u squared plus 2as. I am not going to use that equation simply because I may have worked out v wrong. I don't want to carry down an error. So, S equals U plus AT, U was zero, I get 150 meters south. Then they want the average velocity of the car. Average always means total displacement, total distance, divided by the total time. So they went, it went 150 meters in 10 seconds, 15 meters per second south. Okay, we're okay with that. Final velocity was 30. Essentially, what we've also done is 30 plus 0 divided by 2, 15. Why that works here 
is because my acceleration was constant. Okay? Constant acceleration. A motorbike rider is riding at 40 meters per second east, you, when he needs to brake for a red traffic light. He, he needs to stop within 200 meters. Doesn't mean he does use the 200 meters, he needs to stop in that time. First thing, calculate his acceleration. So we know he has to stop, final velocity is zero. When you don't get given a picture, it's always a good idea to draw one. So this is essentially what we're telling you. I've got my little motorbike. He's going at 40 meters per second. So that's you. And he gets, he needs to get to zero. And we have a distance of 200 meters. It says within 200 meters. So when I look at this, my final velocity is zero. U is 40. A, we don't know. Time, we don't know. S is 200. I have to assume the 200. If he has to, obviously, because we don't know the acceleration, in reality, he may do it before the 200 if his acceleration is bigger than what we're going to calculate now. We are calculating minimum acceleration for him to stop in this time. V squared equals U squared plus 2AS straightforward maths okay he has to go his acceleration is west he was going east this is decelerating okay there has to be a force on him acting backwards i chose this equation because it's the equation that doesn't have time in it it is the only one out of the four that doesn't have time and I didn't know time. Then they wanted the time it would take. I am using the acceleration we found earlier. That acceleration is negative four. When I use that acceleration in an equation, I have to keep the negative because it is a vector. This is the thing that you've got to be careful with in this, all right? That negative has value. If I put it positive there, when I do, so say you forget and you go 40 plus 4t, when you solve for t, you're going to get a negative answer. Time is a scalar. Time cannot be negative. Be very careful with this. Okay? Let's do one more example. The velocity of a truck. Moving along a straight road is decreased uniformly, constant rate, from 20 meters per second to 12. U is 20, V is 12. Covers a distance of 64 meters, so that's S. If it continues to slow down at this rate, how much further will, the, will it drive before it comes to rest? they saying to you, I know what the first part is, okay? Went from 20 to 12 in 64 meters. I want to know how much further does it go? I've put an X there, it should be an S. How much further will it go? Further, not what is its total distance. How much further will it go? I need to recognize that the acceleration it has here is the acceleration it has there. I have to break this up. I simply do not have enough information to do this in one step. From here to here, all I know is initial velocity and final, final velocity. I know nothing else. I need another piece of information. So either I need time or I need A, okay? I'm going to find A. First thing I'm going to do is look at the first part of the motion and find A, which is minus 2. That, I'm happy with the minus, minus 2 because it's slowing down. Simple as that. Then I take that minus 2, I put it into the equation for the second part, so I'm not putting it into the equation from when it went from 12 to 0, okay, 
12 to 0, and that's what they wanted. That means this distance is 36 meters. The truck moves a further 36 meters, so it had moved 64, and now it moves 36. There's always more than one way to do these equations. It's about choosing the equation that gives you, that's easiest for you to use and gets you to the answer, sometimes in the shortest possible way. Sometimes you're going to go in a roundabout way, it doesn't matter, as long as you answer the question.